Hey everybody, Joe Walden here again and we're going to look at how PowerShell can manipulate uh, and examine registry settings. We have a pretty cool feature here. Let's get started. Uh, remember we're going to start off with this code. This is my basic uh, startup code which reads the list of servers in the uh, CSV file and for each server in servers I go ahead and do something if it's selected. Okay, but we're going to enhance it a little bit. We're going to add this code right here. The invoke command allows uh, this remote server that I'm on to contact the server here that's in this uh, variable and allow PowerShell on that server to run the command. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of features in here that you can do. You can pass credentials. Uh, you can also uh, pass arguments and things like that that um, I don't want to get into right now because it's a, it just complicates everything uh, for what I'm going to demonstrate right now. So if I was to run this right now, you'll see that it's just going through and this is the only bit of code that's being executed here. It's just saying write the server name out and that's what it's doing here in the list. And uh, the invoke command, there's no code in here for it to uh, to execute. So let's go ahead and add some code and uh, to give you an idea of what what we're going to do here is I had a project um, that I was on and I had like uh, 35 37 servers that I was uh, working with and I had it I, I needed to make sure that FIPS was turned off okay and in order to, to do this uh, you'd have to log into the server and uh, and locate the registry key. Here's an example. I'm going to look at one my SQL Server here. Uh, I have uh, the registry editor all already up. Uh, we're going to go to uh, the uh, local H key local machine. Which, by the way, um, those of you that may not know, this is actually considered a drive. Each one of these is a drive. <laughs> uh, they don't have a drive letter like uh, C and D and that kind of thing. Uh, and then these are the folders under the drive. But uh, look that up. You'll, you'll, you'll find that, that that's the case. It's kind of interesting way to look at it. But so here in H key local machine, we're going to go into the system folder, current control set, control, and then come down here to LSA, and then FIPS algorithm. And we want to know if this enabled property is set at 0 or 1. Okay, 0 means it's disabled, 1 means it's enabled. So uh, in order to, to do this on every server I would have to go in and log in and do what, what I just showed you there. Just go through and navigate through the, the folder list there and, and it just was very time consuming so I thought well let's write a PowerShell script to do it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just, I'm just plugging in some new code in here. I, I'm just going to write to the uh, uh, screen the uh, following information to let you know what we're checking and uh, here's where we're going to in the invoke command we're going to add this information here let me open this up here so in the invoke command this is this is all the code that's going to be run inside here and so what we're doing here is we've got a registry key here and this is the the folder the, like I say this is the drive and the folder layout how it looks at this is the property name called enabled uh, the property type is a D word and the value uh, that we want it to be is zero we're, we're really we're not going to use this variable here at all in this example but uh, if we were to change it if we found that it was one we'd want to set it to zero anyways the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test the path of uh, reg key if it does not exist then we're going to let the user here know that the key does not exist. If it does exist, we're just going to say, hey, the key exists. All right. So now we're going to jump down here and we're going to run this command, which is kind of interesting. It's a, uh, a command within a command, uh, the way I like to look at it, is we're going to get the item property of the reg key and the path of the reg key, but the name of the property is the key property name, which is enabled here okay and when we get that we want the the property of that whole thing 
So the key property name it should return this property with the with the value in it should return that value, okay? Which should be a zero or a one, which should come which should be returned here into the uh, variable called val. But if key property name does not exist, then val will just be null, okay? Which is this makes it real easy to check because if val is null then we're going to say hey the key property name does not exist and those of you that here let me just clean this up here a little bit there. there's no way that's going to work uh, this is just a, a formatted string here between these brackets here the value of this will be put in there so it'll say uh, enabled property does not exist and here it'll say the enabled property has a value of one this would be the value of this variable there okay so so anyways, that's all that we're going to do here. But we're going to check this on every single server and see what it does. See what kind of results we have. Okay? Let's clear the screen here. Highlight, highlight it and run it. Okay, so we're, we're seeing here that the we're, we're checking for the following registry key. We're getting that little prompt there to let us know what we're looking for. And it's saying on host01, which is my... Uh, Hyper-V host, uh, the key does exist, and the enabled property has a value of zero. Okay, and and so on so far. So, just looking at this, these uh, five, six servers here, uh, all have uh, FIPS turned off. Okay, but just for fun, let me just change something here. Let's say we're looking for uh, instead of enabled, we're just looking for a, uh, a non-existent one. So I'm going to just say a fake. Okay, so there's a property called fake. Now, what do you think's going to happen? It's going to say that the property does not exist. Right? This is going to be fired. So let's just test it to make sure. See? Fake property does not exist. So we know that it's working by just by doing a little test like that. And you can also come up here. Uh, let's set this back. Uh, you can also come up here and change something here, like let's say if I just uh, uh, FIPS1, call this, you know, and I try to run this. See, we're going to see that the enabled, uh, the key does not exist because FIPS1 algorithm policy does, does not exist. Okay? So, now that you have that, let's take this another step further here. What if we want to change it now? We want to change the property to a 1. How we do that is, uh, let me pull up some code here that I have. Uh, what you want to do here is take this code here. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to run this new item property and we're going to say uh, the reg key property name uh, should have a value of, of what we want up here, which is a zero right now. And um, the uh, property type is, of course, a, a D word. See? Right here. So what it's going to do is just it's going to say, okay, if if uh, val is null, it means that the property doesn't exist. So let's create it, right? All right, and then uh, else the property exists and it has a value of such and such. So let's let's do this, and we'll run it, and we're going to create that fake property uh, just for fun. Let's just jump back here. Let's look at our FIPS here. See the properties that are in here. There's no uh, fake property in here. So we'll jump back to this right after we run this. And we're going to call this fake like we did before. Okay? So now when we run it, the fake property does not exist. But remember when we hit this line here, we actually ran this code right here. So let's jump back to our, our SQL Server here and come back. I, here and refresh it. Go 
back to FIPS, and there's our fake. <laughs> okay, so there it is. And now, let's say we want to change the value of fake. Now, so we're going to say, okay, if fake exists, then we, we're not going to do anything, but we want to change the value of it. So we, we know it's zero, so let's change it to 10, just for fun, okay? And what, we're, what we need, though, is another line here to set the property that already exists to the value that we want it to be. Okay, so all we're doing is retain set the item property of the, this reg key and this property name to this new value. That's all we're doing. Straightforward. Okay, are we ready? Remember, we're going to fly through here. The key already exists, so no no action here. Uh, the property already exists, so we're not going to hit that. And set item property is going to be hit because uh, we want to change the property. Actually, we should we could write some code here. Let's see here. What did I have here? I had. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So. It's, a, it's an actually an else if statement here. So, if the if the value does not equal the key property value that we want from up here, which is a ten, then we're going to set the property to that value. All right. <laughs> so, anyways, you can see what's going to happen here. So let's clear the screen. Let's run this bad boy. Fake property has a value of zero because we we're hitting this line right here, right? Okay. But if I come back uh, and and the property was actually set after that line, all right. I should have probably put that on top. So let's jump over here to our SQL Server and let's refresh. And we notice that fake has a value of ten now. Okay. So you see how it's done? So in, in addition to this, this assumes this this reg key here also assumes that this exists. If this does not exist, then you're gonna you're gonna throw some errors here. Okay? So just remember that in the code the way it's written here now, if that property, that registry key does not exist, you're gonna have some uh, uh, errors. And it's not going to work. Just flat out, it isn't going to work. Not, you're not going to damage your registry or anything. Uh, it's just it can't do anything because it, that key doesn't exist. So uh, there you have it. There's the code. And if you go to my blog, you'll see this code posted there where you can just copy and paste it into your own your own script. Okay. Anyways, have a good time. Uh, glad you were able to stop by and listen. Bye.